Definition of strength is not unique. Let's start with one dimensional strength. Why start with 1D strength instead of directly talking about 3D strength? Because in mechanical analysis and simulation, 1D strength is often used in material definition and in determining material status. Here, we will discuss two widely used strength definitions in engineering field. The engineering strength and the true strength. We're going to explain the mathematical formulations of the two strengths and the essential differences between them. Let's first have a look at the engineering strength. The definition of engineering strength is straightforward and uh, intuitive. It's the ratio between the changing lens and the original lens. How does engineering strength get this form? Let's decompose the total change of lens to multiple steps and have a deeper look of this expression. For engineering strength, there is an assumption that for each step during deformation, the change of deformation is uniform, which forms the step incremental deformation. As you see here, for first small step, change of lens is delta L1 for the entire step. It jumps from 0 to delta L1 sharply and remains as a flat line for first step. The strain value for now is delta L1 over L0. For the second step, another increase in length happens. The value is delta L2. Accordingly, we draw another flat step increment. Now, the strain value is the summation of the first step and the second step value, as shown here. Same thing happens for the third step and all the following steps, till the final step. And the strain at the last step is the summation of all these terms. Since the denominator is the same, we can directly add up the numerator, which leads to the expression delta L over L0. So this zigzag kind of presentation of deformation process is it natural? No, in real life, the deformation process is almost always continuous instead of step jump like this. Here the assumption is made in order to have such a simplified strain definition, and engineers are easy to measure or calculate the value. And that's basically why this definition is named as engineering strain. Next, let's have a look of another widely used strain measurement, true strain. Here, instead of making any assumptions of the deformation process, we use the reality. The deformation is continuous. Just as implied by the name true strength, there's more truth here. Compared to engineering strength, the definition of true strength is a little more complicated, requiring the concept of integration. So for this continuous deformation, let's take an extremely small piece of lens change, DL. We call such DL infinitesimal which means it's infinitely small. This deal can prevent any infinitesimal deformation during the entire process. In another word, the total deformation is formed by an infinite number of such deal. For this infinitesimal change of length, we define an infinitesimal strength, which is dl over l0. To have the strength for the entire deformation, we need to do integration for the infinitesimal strength from zero to total strength which leads to an integration from the original lens to the total deformed lens. This integral form is basically the full definition of true strain measurement. With some algebra derivation, the expression can be more concise in the log form. In most cases, you will see true strain appears in this form. A direct comparison between engineering strain and true strain here. Engineering strain uses step incremental deformation, which forms a linear strain. True strain uses continuous deformation, which forms a nonlinear expression. There is a relationship between these two strains. For true strain, the part in bracket is just the expression of engineering strain. So if we replace it by engineering strain, we have the relationship between these two strains. Let's verify that if this two strain meets the requirement of a strain definition. That is, when there is no deformation, they should be absolutely zero and when the deformation is small, they should yield to very similar values. So when the change of length delta L equals to zero, we can see that both of the expressions becomes zero. When there is small deformation, say change of length is 1 20th of the original length, the engineering strength is 0 0.05 and the true strength is calculated to be 0 0.049. So the values are pretty close to each other. However, when the deformation is comparatively large, the differences between the two strands will show up. 
If the change of lens is 30% of the original lens, the engineering strength is 0.3, but the true strength is calculated to be 0.26. The difference between them is more than 10%. Let's make the lens change as horizontal axis and plot the true strength values. Engineering strength is a straight line, while true strength is a nonlinear curve, and they deviate from each other with increasing deformation here. 